My story today comes out of uh, MJ Biz, and it was from yesterday. And the headline is New York calling out marijuana operators that are delinquent on payments. Now, New York is perhaps the only um, state in the whole nation that has a credit limit law that you have to repay your um, credit within the industry for cannabis products within 90 days. And what they report is only two of these, uh, 100, I think it's 161 operators in the state, only two of them are delinquent 30 days. Now, I think that's wonderful news for New York, at least the operators. But when you go to 30,000 feet, what you see across the, the nation is that the debt loads are horrendous. They're not just debt loads to other operators. There's debts in tax laws. I mean, in, in California, our uh, Department of Tax and Fee Administration, if you owe them money, they only call you so many times before they show up with a warrant and take all your money. And that'll ruin that'll ruin your day, trust me. And some other statistics that I, I nosed around this morning and found, um, in San Francisco, SF Gate reported in 2023 that in California, there was $60 million in debt Okay. and that 13% had failed to pay their excise tax. Now, if you recall, California wiped out the cultivation tax a couple of years ago, and shifted the collection of excise taxes from distributors to retailers, and the distributors went, oh, thank God, okay, but the retailers didn't have the money, so it turned into just a mess. Uh, MJ is also reported in April of this year that there was $3.8 billion delinquent debts at that point. And this article reports it's now at four, an estimated greater than $4 billion in debt. And the numbers I was able to find, the, the anticipated value of the cannabis industry in the United States in 2024 would be a little over $35 billion. Uh, so that's 11.4% of that value is in debt that's owed. Now, I'm not an economist, and I'm to defer to economists, and I think at some point, uh, economic schools like the Wharton School are going to be reporting on how in the world can you expect an industry to be able to survive when you've got this kind of debt? You don't have access to short-term loans or lines of credit like the rest, like other industries do. And if you've ever been in any other industry, when you receive a delivery. And there's transfer of payment when it's received. And if you don't have the money, it's a line of credit. People actually get their money. And then the person who has the line of credit has to pay back a bank or some other lending institution. Not the way it works in, in the cannabis industry. Banks don't give you loans. Mm -hmm. okay? You're in debt to typically retailers are the ones that have the big debt loads. And the cultivators, especially small cultivators, have just taken it up the ass. They'll move their product in the market and ultimately get sold, but to try to collect debts in this industry, it's almost impossible because people disappear on you and you can't file bankruptcy. So nobody really wants to go into the receivership world. And we just have these debts continuing to mount. Mm -hmm. And as we all noticed this morning, when you look around the country and find that something has worked, Okay, perhaps somebody should emulate it. And I'm, you know, the message to the California legislature, why don't you consider doing something that limits the amount of debt and how long people have to pay it before you say, uh, put a hold on their license? Mm -hmm. a, small, a small cultivator, let's say that they have a crew and they produce 1,500 pounds, which is not unusual for like a, um, a small to medium-sized row. That's your entire year. Mm -hmm. If you put it in the industry and you don't get paid for a year or more, you cannot survive. And so we've seen a lot of these small to medium-sized cultivators just they can't survive. They drop off or they send their products to the black market, mm -hmm. which is why the trap is always going to win. Because none of these laws seem to help the operators. There are some operators who game the system. But right now, the debt load is just, in my view, unsustainable. There's got to be something done here. Mm -hmm. and. There's just, when you sit down and do a business plan with a small operator, these are just difficult discussions to have. How is it that you make sure that you collect? I've got clients who will give you one free transfer 
if you don't pay within the designated amount of time, you don't get any more. And on top of that, they let everybody else know that, that you don't pay. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, but that's not that's not a way to fix this problem. We've got to have regulations that will keep people from running up these kind of debts, or their businesses close down till they pay them. Mm -hmm. Turn on the debt holder, the onus on the debt, um, the debtor, to have to pay this stuff, and not on a, a creditor who's waiting to be paid and they're dying on the vine. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not going to get fixed real soon, and it's we're going to talk about it a lot more, but. Um, one good thing you can say about New York is only two of their retailers are behind 30 days. You you can't say that about California for sure, and I don't know of any other states you can say that. I'm going to throw us back at you guys. What do you think about this? Mm. Sounds like victim blaming to me. Oh, man. Victim blaming? Yeah. I mean, I think is I think this is just more the reason that we need things like safe banking, and we need so that these uh, businesses can actually uh, thrive and survive instead of uh, this uh, this this uh, death trap that they basically have been thrown into. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like if they're trying to call out the like, the operators, the operators aren't the issue. That's that's victim. Yeah, it's the system. That's, yeah, the problem is the system. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what I meant by victim blame. I wasn't. I wasn't throwing out a little bait for you. Just I thought that's what you were doing. That's what. That's what I thought. Never know. We all thought so. Exactly. See, everybody. I'm trying, thought to, I'm that. trying to be still. <laughs> Rochelle no, and civility in my talk, oh. in, in my rhetoric for the rest of the show. Oh, so I'll be. It, yeah, it's right. definitely the system, but it also. I'm also going to blame the operators that aren't paying. Right. Like, if you are, I'm sorry, margins are thin. That freaking sucks. Mm -hmm. um, but if you took, you know for my product to sell it, you should pay me for said product, especially when you sold it. But if I go in there and you're, it's not on your shelf, where's the money? Because you took it. You also collected taxes on that money. Your job is to remit those money. So I agree. I think, you know, we'll see maybe a lot less of, of people carrying these long, large balances um, if it affects their licensure status. And I think that's kind of a cool little by the way. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. California tried it a year ago. And it didn't get through the legislature. It was not necessarily like New York's, but California's Prop 64 and its progeny is just a mess. It needs mm -hmm. significant revisions. And the industry is circling the drain again. I mean, we're, we're eight years into this, and these small operators are still circling the drain. And the local, you know, the local equity people are not helping. And I've had social equity clients, so I, I know the frustration that Ginny Beth, you've had to deal with. But it's, it's impossible to sit down with these small operators and their investors and come up with a realistic plan because you just can't anticipate what's going to happen down the road. And there's no penalty for not paying people. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just the typical, I would run to court and file a breach contract action. I would put attorney's fees in my contracts. And then I'd ask you to pay not only that, but interest in my attorney's fees. We might actually get something done. In the cannabis industry, it's like, you know, pissing in the wind. Nothing gets done because there's no tools I can use in court to actually get someone to pony up. Because I set up LLCs and C-Corps, they're asset protection devices. I can't get to the individual investor's assets, which is where you have to go to get paid. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just, it's just a mess. It needs a lot of revision. Mm -hmm. Let's bring Sean Kierden here, and he and I will have a pissing match about how to fix Prop 64. Oh, boy. Oh boy. Dale, what is, uh, do you know what the, the result of, um, of pissing in the wind actually is? Probably blows right back in your face. It's a golden shower. Mm. Gross. Right. Gross. We're going to a commercial. Oh we'll be right There's back. some videos out there that <laughs> Jason and I have heard enough. Yeah, we've heard enough. <laughs> Get out of here. We'll be back. <laughs> 